Hello, and welcome to another Shader Sandwich tutorial. My name is Sean Bertka, as usual, and today we'll be creating this grass shader. Looks very fluffy. So, um, here it is. It waggles a bit in the wind. You have a high poly count. Looks good on lots of different models, and all in all, it's pretty nice. So, basically, there are two major ways in Shader Sandwich to create grass or fur, those sort of lots of strand uh, sort of objects. Um, there's tessellation based, which is a more newer method, which only works on modern GPUs. And then there's shell based, which will work on pretty much everything. Mobile, desktop, laptop, prehistoric computers, the ENIAC, you know, we'll work on all those. So today we'll be taking a look at shell based fur. So shell based fur is pretty good, as you can see here, it looks pretty nice. The only caveat is that if you look at it from certain angles, you can see all the individual layers that it's comprised of. These are the individual shells. So, um, depending on what you're going to use the grass for, this may or may not be a deal breaker. You know, if it's going to be looking down in like a first person game, this will be fine. But if it's going to be a game set within the grass and you're like an ant or something, then you're going to want to use a different technique. So, with that out of the way, let's get started. So, open up Shader Sandwich and create a new shader. Then, we'll add a new layer, set it to texture, and we'll load in the grass texture uh, that comes with Shader Sandwich. Just select grass. Here it is. So just load that in. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to enable the shells themselves, all the different layers that will pile on top. So go into your settings and enable shells. So shells are basically copies of the model that have been pushed out in 3D space. For example, the cube, all the faces have been pushed outward. Same thing with the monkey. It's just the monkey is smooth, and so they all stay together. But if we zoom in, you can see the actual mesh inside. So by using lots of these layers and having an alpha mapped grass texture on them, we can make it look pretty good. So I'm going to use the cube for now, because we can actually see underneath it. So set the shell count to something like 3, because the more shells you have, the longer it takes to compile whenever you change something. Finally, set the distance to an input, so that way you can adjust it easily. Alright, so let's actually make it look like grass. So head on back into our layers, and you'll notice up here, the shell area has been enabled. This is because shells use their own textures or their own channels. So what we can do is we can copy the diffuse layer into the shells diffuse, and just paste it. So there we go, so you can now see it has the shell texture. Now to make it actually transparent. To do this, we can go back into our settings and enable transparency. Next, we'll set it to Fade Blend Mode, because it looks a lot better. Now, once you do this, you might notice some Z-Writing issues. Well, yeah, you will. <laughs> so what we can do is we can go ahead and enable Z-Writing with Full Mode. And that will fix up the majority of the issues. However, you may still notice a couple around the edges. To fix these up, what we can do is go into our Culling in the Shells area, and just set it to Front. And there we go. For the most part, that looks pretty good. With the monkey, it might look kind of funny still, but once we actually get the fur in there, you won't be able to notice any problem. Okay, so let's actually do that. So let's go back into our layers, and into our shell. So we've got to give it an alpha layer. Now, the diffuse, uh, the texture we're using, already has an alpha channel. If I open it up in Earthen View, you can see that it's got transparency. So what we need to do is copy it, and then paste it in the alpha channel. The alpha channel already is set to use the layers alpha channel, so we'll instantly get a good result. So there we go, we've already got some grass, and it's looking okay. Problem is, it looks really transparent. Even once I lower the distance so that it looks a bit more clumpy, it still looks really transparent and fake. This is because in real life, the lower down to the ground you get, the darker it usually is, due to shadows, ambient occlusion, things like that. We can fake this in Shader Sandwich really easily. So, head on into our layers, into the shell area, and add a new diffuse layer. Next, uh, set its color to an input, add an input for the color, and then set its color to black. So the idea is that what we're going to do is we'll have the ambient occlusion fade out the closer to the top it gets. So it starts off really dark, and then gets really light at the top. So to do this, we can add an input for the mix amount, and then if we head into our inputs, we can replace this mix amount uh, with the shell depth. So what this will do is the closer to the uh, base layer it is, the higher the value will be. So for example, when it's at the base, it'll be 1, halfway through will be 0 0.5, and then at the top shell will be 0. 
So you can see here that the bottom layers are darker than the top layers. Finally, we can go ahead and copy and paste this layer into our diffuse. And there we go. Now, it might be looking a little dark, so one last thing we can do is go ahead and enable Use Alpha on both of the layers. So let's enable on the diffuse and now on the shell. And this will let you adjust the alpha of the color to lower the ambient occlusion's strength, like so. So that's already making the grass look a lot more detailed and better, basically. Alright, so we're almost there. Let's take a look at what the grass will look like when it's all done. I'm going to increase the shell count to 8, just temporarily. How's your day, everyone? Mine's okay. Hopefully yours is. Here we are. Cool. So, um, you can see yeah, that it's looking pretty good, actually. Okay. So now to add some movement. So I'm going to head over and change it to Tessellated Cube. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be manipulating the individual vertices of the model. So obviously the more vertices, the higher quality wind you can get. If I turn on wireframe mode and just temporarily disable shells, uh, I can show you this. So basically the default cube has this sort of vertex count. It's only got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 for each face. Doesn't look particularly great, and when they move, these are the only points that can be adjusted. So you can't really get very fine movement within each individual grass strand. However, the tessellated cube has a lot more. Uh, sh spheres have a lot more, monkeys have a lot more. Yeah, it's just this lonesome cube. So basically, use something with a decent poly count, and it will look okay. I mean, it looks fine anyway. It's just, yeah, it looks better. So I'll go ahead and re-enable shells, and I'll set the shell count down to something like 3, just for testing purposes. So that way it all runs a little better. So now to add some movement. So I'll disable wireframe and I'll head on into our layers and back into our base. So we're going to be doing vertex displacement so the vertex channel is shared between shells and the base. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to add some movement. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add a layer to it and you'll notice nothing changes. So next what we'll do is we'll add an input for the color. So I'm going to explain a few things before we actually get started. Vertex displacement acts a little differently to the other channels. So the thing is, with vertex displacement, there are already some very important values that have been set before we've begun doing this. So like with all the diffuse values or the alpha values, it doesn't really matter what their initial values are. We change them. However, with vertex positions, it's kind of important that all these points are in the place they are, because that's what makes it look like a cube. All these points are where they are, because that's what makes it look like a sphere. Because of this, you can access uh, some of these values through the vertex displacement type. By default, it's set to position. So basically what this is, is that the layer itself contains this position, and then this is multiplied against whatever uh, layer type you set it as. For example, at the moment it's white, so each of these are actually 1, although Unity displays them as 255 because everyone's used to that, and um, it multiplies these against the position. So for example, if I begin to stretch this towards there, you'll notice that these two go towards zero, which is why it thins out on those two axes. Uh, so we can actually use this for a kind of cool effect. That is not what we're going for. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to set this to none, because we just want to offset the um, individual strands. We don't want to actually do any genuine manipulation of where they already were. However, by setting it to none, you'll notice it all vanishes. This is because now all the vertices are being set to the same position, which makes it practically invisible. Instead what we can do is we can change this mix type to add. By doing this we're now adding the position onto it. So now if we alter this color you'll see the entire object moves. So finally what we need to do is we need to make this only affect the topmost grass strands instead of the bottom ones as well. To do this we can just set our add amount to have the same input as what we used for our ambient occlusion. So you just set it to our mix amount of our texture. And there we go. So now when we alter the color, what will happen is that only the topmost strands will move. See? So we just want to make sure that we only set it to very subtle movement. So I'm going to set mine to 6 for now, and you'll see that it's moving across. So that's cool, but how do we animate it? We're going to animate it by using a mask. The mask will just be a noise texture which moves across, uh, and that way it only displaces based on that. So we can head over to our masks, and I'll just call it Wind1, with a misspelled I, and then I'll just add a new layer and set it to Noise. 
Now, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and disable real-time previews. This way, I can work a little faster. By disabling real-time previews, it won't have to recalculate all the code every time I make a change, which will speed things up a lot, it just won't update this preview. But that's okay, because the mask isn't being used yet. So, with our layer, set it to noise, and then add a mapping scale effect. So that way we get smaller wind movement. So I'm going to set it to something like here, I usually go with 7, works pretty well. So the next thing, we want it to scroll across the screen, so that way we get some wind. So add a mapping offset effect. As, as you can see, we can move the x-axis and it scrolls across. So add an input for the x-offset, then head into inputs, and then turn off visible for the x-offset, and set it to time, basic, standard. So now, if we head back to our layers, you'll see it moves across the screen. Finally, if we head back into our base, and into our vertex layer, we can set the mask to our new mask. Alright, well let's see how that looks. So, turn on real-time preview updates, and take a look. Any second now. There we go. So you can see now it's moving pretty nicely. However, it's only moving in one direction. And this is because of our color. So, one thing you might try doing is just setting the blue, which would be the z-axis, to 6. However, this ends up just having a diagonal motion. What we need to do is separate out these two axes from each other. So set that back down to 0. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to add a second mask and offset it a bit more. So I'll change previews to real-time preview updates off again. Then I'll add a new mask and set it to Wind 2. Next, I'll copy and paste this layer over there. And finally, I'll add a mapping offset effect again. And I'll offset the y-axis. So that way now these two have completely different uh, values. So now if we head back into our base, we can copy and paste this vertex layer again. And then set it to use the other mask. Finally, we want to add another input for the color, otherwise these two will share the same axes. Finally, then go into the color, and change it from zero, 6 to 0, and change the blue to 6. So now, let's re-enable real-time preview updates, and see how that looks. So you can see how this looks a lot more random, which is just what we want. Okay, cool. So, I'm just going to lower these values a bit to 4 instead. 4 by 4 and finally I'll turn up the show count to something like 9 ok and there we go so that will basically be it once it finishes loading <laughs> here it comes uh, eventually and there we go it's done so we now have a pretty nice looking grass shader, it's got some fake ambient occlusion, some nice wind effects, all in all it looks pretty good. Okay well, thanks for watching, hopefully this all made sense, if you have any questions or have a suggestion feel free to leave a comment below, and yeah, and if you're looking for a different effect, the tessellation version will be up pretty soon, when it's done there'll be an annotation over here. Right, well, thanks for watching, see you guys later.